Okay, I've done a, a video. I don't know when it cut out, but I, I lost the uh, last one. I've just stripped this down to nothing but sheet metal. The, this microwave has a damaged magnetron, but its its mott is almost certainly fine. Um, and this is it right here. Now this is the part that is so dangerous. This is the part that says high voltage for so many reasons. We do not want to uh, abuse this thing. This is our primary winding. Look at the size of that coil. There's like 120 turns on there for the U.S. system of 60 cycles, which is around most of the world, uh, at 120 or so volts. Now there'd be twice this many or smaller wire at 220. We need a mag flux this big. So this has, has probably several, definitely several thousand turns. Um, and the flux density in one of these things is very high, unlike the power transformer. In fact, sometimes I balance those with capacitors, AC capacitors like a power station. What we have here is, is the, the controller. You can do a lot of things with this. It's a microcontroller. These integrated switches, we can figure out what they do. We can use them. You can make a Morse code key out of this. As, yeah, there's much better keys. I mean, I've got one over here, a real one. But you can make a makeshift Morse key out of that. So we remove, these are integrated switches, there's a bunch of them. Microwave ovens are bastions of, of stuff. These are contact switches, you can use them as, they can switch, these can throw 10 amps. I wouldn't do it a lot, but they can, easily. And uh, in fact the 602's control circuitry is on here, although you don't need to have a 10 amp switch. But for the 602, uh, the original version had a 10 amp switch and I could. Now, this is the cool part. These relays right here. These turn, turn the MOT on and off, which turns the magnetron on and off. And what that means is that we can use these relays as a timer for turning on and off the devices that we want. And one of the most important things is, say we have a MOT-powered uh, microwave oven transformer-powered Tesla coil and we want to make sure we don't get electrocuted. The first thing that we want to do, okay, to make sure we don't get electrocuted, is shut the power off going into the MOT as quickly as possible. If there's capacitors on it, so if you don't have 120 volts going in, you don't have one amp at 2,000 volts going out. And if you don't have 80 volts, usually I have like more like 60 or 80 volts going in. Maybe 100, and maybe 1,000 coming out, but it's still very, very lethal. So what you want to do for VTTCs, uh, maybe 2,000. Um, for the bigger tubes, I'm going to need 3,000, which means I need 4,000 total possible in two mods. So, in order to make this even remotely safe, we take relays that turn mods on and off, and you can get them from microwave ovens as well. This is a normal transformer. This is for providing about 9 volts or so to the microcontroller, which is right here. we got a crystal on it. The microcontroller is just a timer. We have right here all the transistors that select. These transistors here are selecting which display in sequence. So this is like an uh, Adreno chip, but it, you know it's not an Adreno chip, but it's programmed exact, pretty much exactly the same way. You have um, code that's written into it, and then what it does is end up writing out four digits. You can look this chip up, and um, sometimes they try to delete the number. Yeah, they either cover it up or they scrape it off, but a lot of times you can still see it. This one appears to be S3P70F4XZZ-AV94JHBF5. And the other number is Samsung. Uh, they put glue on these things occasionally. Anyway, they, they, it's proprietary. They, I mean, it's a timer. It's so... Anyway. Sometimes they think they should protect uh, defrost modes, and you know this is this is all microcontroller program. These are all pre these aren't actual power level settings. What people don't know a lot about microwaves is that the microwave oven simply turned on and off. Almost unless you have an inverter microwave or even more modern, we're talking about just turning it on and off cyclically. So this kind of timer is great if you want to use like a VGTC, uh, because you can cyclically turn it on and off at different times with this timer. Um, and what I want to talk about, though, is using one of these relays, or both of them, in, in parallel, which I'm not sure if that's what they were doing here. It looks like one of them runs the 
but we could use one or both in parallel to turn MOTS on and this is 17 amp 250 volts at switch yeah that's big 12 volt pull down 20 amps at uh, 125 so we can pull some heavy this might have uh, this has some good contacts is what it's rated for this is a nice relay we can turn a whole gigantic Tesla coil not a gigantic but we can turn a 2000 watt Tesla coil on and off with this if we do it right I would say 1000 watts but 1500 not much higher but we can still push the limits on these so be, just be careful it could fuse in which case the, the it'll arc will actually you want to put things on there to prevent it but um, switching AC is better so you, what you do is, is just put a circuit on there with, with a uh, resist band. It's really simple. Take a wall cube, 12 volts, put a switch on that, and have that switch control whether or not power goes into the MOT. 120 volts or whatever comes out of your variac. So have the second circuit from your variac, so you can set it 10% or 100%. Don't ever go above 120 on the variac. If you put more than that in the MOT, you're going to overcharge it. I don't know how far you can do it, but definitely it will over, it'll eat power really fast. Thank you for watching. This is what's inside a microwave oven. What mostly commonly goes wrong with microwave ovens has to do with two things. This is the filter assembly, and they use this because it generates basically 2.45 gigahertz, which is uh, 2,450 megahertz. Over 300 gives you its wavelength. But regardless of all that math, uh, what's important here is to realize that the harmonics of this frequency are powerful enough to get into Wi-Fi and today's modern uh, UHF devices. So they put it in a Faraday cage. And the reason why, you don't have to worry about it because, well, light and x-rays are up at like, well, 30 to 60 billion gigahertz. And this is 2.4. Any questions? I mean, the energies are, so this is what blocks it. In the same way that you can block light with small enough holes, the energies are being blocked here because the wavelength won't penetrate it. Pretty much will not penetrate at any angle with this size. The magnetron itself is this, and it magnetically constricts inside there electrons to generate high energy. And we can see here the short circuit that started with the, the wet, filter that keeps usually keeps condensation out ends up turning to carbon and that's how they usually fail it ends up becoming more and more conductive arcs internally they have to shut it off they'll keep putting glue on it thinking that'll fix it and might momentarily stop and then it'll get this blow a fuse and that's it this is actual anode damage and they're not supposed to look like this it's supposed to be shiny this blew a hole in its anode right here just blew a hole i don't know if it decompressed the tube or not but this is beryllium you don't want to break it Never break it because uh, beryllium uh, in pieces is, is not good for you, to say the least. So, well, you just don't want to break it in pieces and inhale it. I mean, uh, it's not good for you. But um, you can look that up online. But basically speaking, there's a magnetron. This is very dangerous. Can't tell you that enough. There's been reports of people dying from a 1 mu F capacitor uh, that's charged still. It's got a built-in resistor. It's unlikely you'd die from this, although if you had a pre-existing condition, you might by itself. But from this, see, it, okay, this is what it's unlikely you'd die from by itself, okay? This by itself, this is 1 mu F 2000. Yeah, it would shock the shit out of you, but it's likely to discharge with its resistor here first. It doesn't hold a lot of energy either. It would hurt, it's DC. This will kill you, okay, if you don't respect it. And this hook to this or anything else will. And I, I couldn't make that more clear. This is very true. This is the one thing in your house that you really can't take second chances with. It's worse than a television coil. It's more dangerous than anything. This, this, they're actually phasing these out with solid state. But um, this, is, this is 20 kVDC cable they're using in this, but actually it it's only needs to be two. We have 2,000 volts coming out of most of these at one amp. And that's, a cons that, that's more than... It only takes, according to the uh, last time I took the test, 30, 30 volts at 30 MA is considered lethal. And it's even less now. I think it's 24, 28 volts at, at just a few. It's, it's, it's really small. So be careful because everything I've shown you here, it's at your own risk, DIY. I'm warning you right now that uh, if you have any questions, please 
right, me or anyone else who, who does this stuff, uh, you want to build an integrated safety switch for your Tesla coils. Uh, vacuum, I do a lot of vacuum tube Tesla coil work uh, when I have a chance. I've been very busy and I don't have a lot of money. But when I get an old microwave and stuff, I get more parts and I can keep going. So the thing is here is that my father has a type of dementia. So I've been... But anyway, I'm doing a, a science video. The main thing is here is that... Uh, we just found out about it. But the, the output here, this is the hot lead and so is the chassis, okay? So when you talk about a, a MOT, I want everybody to know that when they hook it up, the chassis is hot. And so it's extreme. You see this wire right here? It's sticking out of the secondary. And that's how we can tell immediately where it's going. This is the secondary winding. It's going right to the chassis, and it would arc, you know it would only arc about this far by it. But then you are you start arcing it like this, it'll go that far. And the reason is amperage, but it'll knock your your it'll blow your fuse or breaker first. So, but this is I can't under I can't stress how dangerous these are. It's the most dangerous piece of electronics in your your house, and it, everybody's got one. Now, <clears throat> it's not something that is guaranteed to kill you, but it's very very dangerous. If you touch it, it's pretty much yes. I'm just going to say that because, you know, any part of this, when I was holding both these together, I was like, oh, I just said, you know, this is extremely dangerous. Um, thank you for watching. And, uh, yeah, this by itself probably won't kill you, but I wouldn't mess with it. You want to discharge these with a, with a lead. So this disconnected and sitting around can hold a charge anyway. There's been reports. Now, I'm being extra careful here, trying to explain how cautious you need to be. But you should have this on an integrated switching supply, the MOTs that you use, so that your 120 volts by 12 volts DC controls a relay like I showed you here. You buy one or remove one from this that can handle that amperage, 10, 20 amps, and you switch the MOT on and off from there. Okay, so that immediately, and you have a dead man's type switch, so that you push the button. Now you want an isolated as much switch. You don't want a switch that's grounded immediately, but you want a switch you can hold on to you can even tape this up with duct tape. Really, it's kind of dumb, but make sure you, you can't activate it immediately. But there's plenty of ways. You can do it fiber optically would be the best. But I just use a 12-volt isolation circuit. It's plenty. Uh, what that means is that if, if I'm not holding this switch down, I can't get electrocuted because the moment I take my hand off it, it the, within less than a second, the dangerous voltages that could kill me are out of the circuit. So when I do the VTTC 700... Uh, demonstrations and such using these MOTs and power supplies uh, that I now use that system complete, completely and exclusively so the relay turns everything on and off on high voltage and the filaments are on all the time and that stuff's enclosed but I don't have to worry about touching the circuit by accident you know which does happen people uh, or other people even try to touch it which I've had to scold people for that yeah some people are really fearless even when I'm not so you have to, yeah, when you're demonstrating, you really want to be careful about that, telling people what the limits of your coil are and such. I've been coiling for some time and showing people, but not a lot of this has been put with the VTTC 700 schematic I just released. I wanted to explain a little bit about microwaves and a little bit about what I know. We got our, this is our buzzer here. This is our relay. This is our microcontroller. These, uh, these transistors might be the probably 2222s or 3904s or equivalent, something like that. They're C something, which means they're NPNs. Yeah, these are NPN set up. What they do is they, you only get one display out of seven segments from the microcontroller, and because of timing, you end up making that into four. So what that means, it's a complicated thing, but they end up cycling this, and the transistors do the switching. So you have the leads being switched. Just like an Adreno. It's, it's, it's the same sort of stuff, only it's probably older. So we've got this chip here custom programmed probably not going to be a lot of use to you unless you keep it in this board and you use it maybe as your controller which you can do i can power you can power this transformer up from the hot lead that runs into this this transformer runs this board okay and you can actually put the power through the relay which is right here this is the switch contact we disconnect these put new switches on it it'll now operate Hold on. so we may have to enable the circuit and i think that's what this is is a circuit enable which is like one of the heat sensors or one of the, the open up. Yeah, this is it right here. This is the door enable circuit. This is a master circuit enable. It, as long as this, this might even be on the chassis itself. So this might shut it off because this is a low voltage enabling switch. So once we switch this around or, or just short it, what happens is we turn this on permanently. 
So when you have this small switch like this with a small cable, you can see that that this is your enabler. And so I've got four minutes. All right. So uh, what I'm gonna do, gonna do this is gonna be. Now you gotta look at this, but this is where your transformer input is for 120 volts. Now start with a variac and a fuse. You never know. You never know. But in this case, I'm sure of this one. Uh, the one that you take apart may be a bit different. That's what I'm saying. They're, they are different. But in this case, we have a 120 volt transformer here, low voltage. Maybe uh, half an amp comes out of here. A little, little diode bridge. Actually, it's just a diode uh, half bridge. And these, but these two are switches. This may as well be a light switch right here with the connection between these two and these two. So we can watch what this does when we turn it on. Once I hook it up to 120 volts, which is really right here, and then enable it by connecting this together. Now remember, if you don't know what you're doing, this is do at your own risk. Please don't try any of this, uh, especially with this. This is serious, kids. <laughs> no, I know you're not kids. You guys, you guys are really great. Um, there's a lot of genius online today. Yes. And a lot of people that are building incredible coils. I really want to see people... Uh, uh, do things right with the electric so that they don't get shocked with mods and such. So I'm going to do a schematic that shows you how to do the integrated uh, circuit. It's pretty simple. As I say, just do something that turns a relay on and off, turn that mod on and off momentary. So a switch that you can only hold down, just like this. In order to work, you got to be able to hold it down. Otherwise, that's it. So if I'm not, if I'm getting shocked, I'm not going to be able to hold this switch down, especially if it's harder to hold, harder to push. So. Um, the idea behind it is momentary, so a second after I take my hand off the switch, that's it, it's not working. So there's n not enough power in the circuit to be dangerous. So, um, I'm not gonna, I don't, but the keypad will still work, so all this can be put into something like this. What this is, is a programmable microwave oven, as, as <laughs> it's not the most, I use it all the time though, because I can plug my soldering iron into this. I can even put it in a mode that will cycle on and off every 10 minutes based on low power dinner cooking. And that allows me to turn my coil on momentarily and then off and back on and then off. So really it's fun. You can plug this thing in, type in the amount of time you want it to be on and it works just fine. In fact, it'll work at lower voltages than you might think. You can run these things sometimes all the way down to voltages as low as 70 volts. And that's because a lot of this, even though this transformer and such will handle lower voltages of voltage regulation circuits and such, the new switching supplies are much better at this. They stay very regulated all the time, but the relay will not pull down if you go too low. So on a variac, uh, you can always separate these two, so you, don't have, you can variac control your, your MOTs, that therefore control your, your uh, you definitely want that. If you don't have the money for a Variac, you can use a series of ballasts. And, but, you know, it's a lot. So, anyway, this is how you do it. You just type in 20 seconds or 20 minutes. But the thing is, I can't run anything longer than 30 minutes. So, if soldering iron, whatever, or 45, what was it? Uh, 59 minutes, yeah. 59 minutes is my limit. If I try to type in uh, 68 minutes, it doesn't work. It won't activate. I have to clear it out and go 5, 9, and you'll hear the relays. There's the relay. Now this has come on. This outlet's come on. So this outlet gets turned on and off with about 10 amps, and it's wired up with heavy-duty wire from this heavy-duty, pretty heavy-duty wire, an extension cord wire, and it's just put in this thing and glued and otherwise crudely connected. But it works, and I use it. I've been using it for two years now. You can stop and clear it. The relay goes off. Now, the integrated switching circuit is not just this. This turns off soldering irons that get left plugged in, or power supplies that get left plugged in, or filaments, like uh, if you have a tube you're, you're worried about leaving on. This will make sure it deactivates itself within an hour if you don't keep pl pl um, plugging in new numbers there. Okay, you wanted, uh, some people wanted some, some new videos. There's one. We can use this to cool things. Uh, all right, so obviously put 120 volts in this. Now you want to be careful. One again. Um, now, when you take one of these apart, you get something like this. If you get all nothing but sheet metal left, well, the schematic. You want to keep that. I've already done that. 
Um, most of them do have a schematic, which will tell you a lot more about how these work. But uh, 